Late at night, as Shane sat in his study, he grew deeply disturbed by what he read. With sparks of anger in his eyes, he continued reading the papers that were grasped in his trembling, white-knuckled hands. He was considered one of the bravest on the force, but now he was visibly shaken. There was a knock on the door. When Bob appeared, Shane slid another document over, covering what he had been reading. He glanced at it casually, though, as a reminder to look at it again later. He stood by his desk for a while, talking with his visitor. It was a clear night, and the room was slightly cool, but Shane was in a cold sweat. After Bob left, he again picked up the document and began reading it. As he reread it, he started trembling. Madison, Ian, this type of news is destructive. I will defend this even if it kills me, he thought. Sitting at home, Ellie listened to the news that her staff had reported. She smiled stiffly, not pleased with what she had heard. Lynn's plan was very useful. She was just too stupid and timid to get better results. Without saying anything, Ellie dismissed her staff. She pondered on the thick book of records in her hand and the other papers lying on a nearby table. They were all files from various large hospitals. Every person who had undergone a physical examination had their details recorded. Ellie was studying them to see if, by any chance, she could find a match among those people. When Brooklyn returned, she watched Ellie studying the records. She sighed lightly and walked over to take the book from her hand. Ellie, don't wear yourself out, she advised. Ellie smiled, but again picked up the book and continued to read it intently. No matter how hard my parents try to stop me, I won't stop. After all, this is about me, she thought. She had nobody to rely on except herself. Brooklyn started to speak, but paused and thought over her words before eventually saying, Ellie, I have news to tell you. Ellie didn't raise her head as she continued studying the records one by one. The perfect match for the heart transplant has been found, Brooklyn announced and at the same time, Ellie stopped flipping the pages in the book and looked up, her eyes shining brightly. But the situation isn't straightforward, Brooklyn added. Is the donor a healthy candidate? Ellie asked, narrowing her eyes. Brooklyn nodded sadly. If the person was also on the brink of death, then how good would the heart be? But not only was it a healthy candidate, but the person was also very much alive. Sign, Ellie didn't say anything. She lowered her head. Brooklyn wanted to say something, but in the end, what was there to say? She only looked at her daughter with a blank stare. When Jared entered the room, he took in the scene as his daughter and wife faced each other in silence. Ellie greeted her father, and then turned and went to her room so her parents could have time alone. Sign, Jared walked to his wife's side. After being so strong for such a long time, Brooklyn started crying and wrapped her arms around her husband. If it hadn't been for carelessness, Ellie wouldn't have gotten so seriously ill. She wouldn't have been an invalid. If not for my stupidity, Ellie wouldn't be like this now, she croaked. Jared, concerned about his wife's emotions, didn't say anything but gently enveloped her in a tender hug. If we'd been more careful at the time... If Claire had been more responsible back then, Ellie would have recovered by now despite her condition. But why has this burden plagued us? How long will she suffer this torture? Do you know? I really hate that woman. I hate her until I die, she cried. Her words dripped with malice. It's all because of her that our lives are like this. Jared frowned and remained silent, but his heavy breathing expressed the resentment he also felt. Twenty-six years ago, Brooklyn and Jared had their very first baby, Ellie. The family was carriers of invisible genetic heart disease. However, by the time of Jared's generation, this disease had not appeared in the family for three generations. Later, they discovered that the hereditary disease would only appear under certain circumstances. This made the family happy because perhaps it could be avoided. But it caused some sadness, too, because it was still there. The disease was said to have a long incubation period. Perhaps the carrier would only find out that there was a problem with their hearts when they were middle-aged, 
or maybe they would find out at the end of their life. However, it was also possible that the problem would be found out when they were born. This disease seemingly had a fuse that just needed to be lit. Back then, Brooklyn believed that everything would be okay. But in the end, this belief caused their daughter, Ellie, to suffer a most unsettling reality. She was under a death sentence. She could have a heart attack at any moment. At that time, Brooklyn didn't know what to do. Grandfather Thompson said he would take care of Ellie's medical needs and find a compatible heart donor. Upon hearing that news, Brooklyn and Jared felt that there was hope for Ellie. The couple was young and hoped they would be as well accepted in society as Grandfather Thompson. Ellie had become the beloved daughter of their family from the day she was born. This had a lot to do with her physical defect, but gradually she relied on her abilities to gain a firm foothold in her family. When she was two years old, her grandfather had still been unable to find a compatible heart donor for Ellie. They had a loving and peaceful relationship, but he still wanted a healthy heir for the family. Unexpectedly, Brooklyn found herself pregnant with Claire, and because of that, Ellie's grandfather stopped looking for donors and missed the best opportunity for Ellie to have the surgery performed. That was the first time Claire was seen to have stopped Ellie from potentially getting better. At that time, Ellie's grandfather laughed and called Claire a playful and greedy child because of the good news she brought to the family. He said that Claire would fight for her place even before she was born. When Ellie was four years old, and Claire too, it became apparent that her grandfather was disappointed to only have granddaughters and not grandsons. Even the urgency of finding a heart donor for Ellie had gradually worn off. Jared and Brooklyn had no choice but to search for a donor themselves. They even began searching on the black market. Brooklyn's heart was filled with resentment. She blamed Claire for having neglected Ellie. Meanwhile... The anonymity between the sisters that had been formed from the moment they were born continued to develop. Jared and Brooklyn both looked in the direction Ellie had taken. With a determined look, they knew they had to help her, no matter what. In her room, Ellie leaned against the door and raised her hands. She saw they were trembling, and her breathing became rushed. Before she blacked out, she ran to the bedside, took medicine from the cabinet, and stuffed the pill into her mouth. When she calmed down, she glanced around at the scene in front of her. Everything was as messy as before. Every time she got sick and looked for her medicine, it was like this, and she couldn't control it at all. Her eyes narrowed and she laughed. Was her opportunity finally here? This time, Claire couldn't interfere. No one can stop me now, she declared. At Mercy Hospital... Ian followed Ron down the hallway toward the ward where Claire was being looked after. It was the first time Ian had gone to see her. There was no one else in the room besides Claire, who was lying quietly on the bed. Ron stood outside the door and did not follow him in. He knew that Claire was Ian's ex-girlfriend. After closing the door, Ian silently looked at Claire as she lay on the bed with her eyes wide open. He skillfully checked her injuries. They were severe, and even now, doctors were closely observing her. On the few occasions she had been awake, she had remained silent. After writing a few words on the medical chart, Ian turned and prepared to leave. His actions were neat. Ian, a hoarse voice spoke. It was the first time Claire had spoken since the accident. Ian, do you want to know who that woman is? The air in the room seemed to grow frigid. Claire seemed to have gone crazy. She struggled to sit in bed. Her eyes were wide open as she stared at him and said anxiously, If you heal my legs, I'll tell you who that woman is, okay? Ian squinted his eyes and looked at her. Her face was pale and sallow and her hair was messy. She was already thin, but now she looked like her bones would be exposed. However, she looked like she had walked around in hell, and it was apparent that she wanted to make a deal with him.